Hello and welcome to the lecture on liability related transactions. So we're going to start out with some fairly simple current liabilities and then work on more longer term liabilities that uh, tend to be a little bit more complicated. So we'll talk about note payable related transactions, short term note payable, so note payable that are due within a year. We'll talk about sales tax related transactions and keep in mind that we're a pass through from this uh, customers to the government for that. We'll talk about installment notes that are a very common way for companies to finance purchases of fixed assets as an example. If you ever uh, borrow money to buy a car, you'll sign an installment note. And then we'll talk about bonds payable related transactions. So notes payable. Um, in this case here, we have a $10,000 note that we issue. So we sign it and give it to the bank. That's the issuance of the note. And it's a 6% six month promissory note to big bank, which is a made up name of a bank, of course. So the thing we need to keep a track of here, or the we need to keep in mind is that we need to do an accrual at year end. This six month term for the note will span over a year end for us. So standing on year end, we're going to make an adjusting entry to recognize interest expense to date. The purpose of that is to get the proper amount of interest expense in year one and the proper amount in year two. You'll need to remember the formula for calculating interest expense. So that's going to be the principal of the note times the annual interest rate times the portion of the year in question. So what I'd like to do is create the entry for issuing the note, the entry to make the adjustment on December 31st, and then the necessary entries on the due date of the note. So go ahead and hit pause and then I'll go over that with you. Okay, so on September 1st, we'll debit cash for 10,000 and credit notes payable for 10,000. On December 31st, I want to recognize the interest that has occurred. So interest is incurred as time passes when you owe money. So I'll use the equation 10,000 times 6% times 4 divided by 12 because four months have gone by at this point. I use 12 as a denominator and sometimes students get mixed up with this. It's not 6, it's not the term of the note that's the denominator. It's always going to be 12 or 365 because it's relative to the fact that 6% is an annual interest rate. So I'm saying I owe $10,000 at 6% for 4 out of 12 months for the period in question here. So on December 31st, I've owed the money for four months. So that equals $200 of interest. So I debit interest expense for 200, credit interest payable for 200. Then on February 28th, I do the very same calculation for the two months that land in the second year. So 10,000 times 6% times two over 12 is $100. So I debit interest expense, credit interest payable. And then I pay the note and I pay the note. I transfer to the bank $10,300, so I credit cash for $10,300, and that represents payment of the principal on the note, so I debit note payable for $10,000 that wipes out that account, and I debit interest payable for $300 that wipes out the accrued interest that I've recorded in the books. The next time of liability I want to talk about is sales tax payable. And again, businesses collect sales tax payable and remit it to the government on a regular basis. So in this case here on October 1st, this company is selling products. So they're selling inventory that costs them $6,000. They're selling it to a customer for 10,000 with the terms net 30, recognizing the sales tax rate is 8%. Keep in mind, just a little refresher, when you're selling inventory, you're going to want to recognize the sale and you're going to want to recognize the cost side of the sale. So cost of goods sold and inventory, the impact on those accounts. You can record that as either one or two entries either way. Then on October 31st, record the receipt of the payment in full from the customer. And then on the same day, separate entry, because it's a separate transaction, record the payment of the sales tax collected to the government. And let's assume this is the only sale we made in this period. So go ahead and hit pause and work on that entry. 
Okay, so I've chosen to do it as one entry here. So I'll talk about it in two parts though. So recognizing the sale, I'm gonna debit accounts receivable for 10,800 because that's how much I need to collect from the customer. That represents sales, which I've credited for 10,000 and sales tax payable for $800 or 8% of 10,000. That's what I need to get from the customer. Then I recognize the cost side of the sale. So I debit cost of goods sold for 6,000 and I credit inventory for 6,000 and then I make sure the entry balances. When the customer pays me at the end of the month, I debit cash for 10,800 and credit accounts receivable for 10,800, which wipes that off the books, the receivable. And then I pay the government. So I debit sales tax payable for 800, credit cash for 800, that takes that liability off the books. Next, I'd like to talk about installment notes, and I just want to give you a brief refresher on the mechanics of an amortization table. I've uploaded an amortization template to Moodle, and that's a, a handy file that you might want to save onto your local computer for use down the road. If somebody tells you that they're going to buy a car for $30,000 at 5% over five years, you could tell them what the payment's going to be really quickly. So that's what a bank uses to determine the note payment here. In this case, it's 5,600. 98. So the bank has taken the information that it's 24,000 that you're borrowing, annual payments, 6% interest, five years. They take those pieces of information and determine that the annual payment that should be made is 5698. So one feature of an installment note is the payments stay the same. And for each payment, we have to determine how much of that payment is associated with interest expense and how much is associated with reducing the principal or reducing how much we owe. So for any kind of installment note, which again is very common, we need to do an amortization table so that we know how to record the entry for each payment. We know what the debits should be when we credit cash. So what I'd like you to do here is record the issuance of the note. Okay, so what happens on January 1st when we sign this note? And then just record the first two payments. Do the journal entries for the payment on December 31st, 2013 and December 31st, 2014. Go ahead and hit pause and do those three entries and then we'll cover that. Okay, so in this case, when we issue the note, we debit cash for 24,000 and credit notes payable for 24,000. We might have an account that says notes payable long-term versus short-term sometimes or versus current. Sometimes companies will do that too. And when I make that first payment, I'm gonna credit cash for 56.98 because that's, and I see I have a mistake here, darn it. So because that's what we're paying the bank, and then we're gonna debit interest expense for the interest portion of 1440, and we're gonna debit note payable for the principal portion of 4258. Make sure those two numbers add up together to 5698. See, so I've got 4258 in the wrong column there. I apologize for that. And then when I make the second payment, I look back to that amortization schedule. Again, I'm gonna be paying 56.98. That's what I credit cash for. And in this case, I debit interest expense for 11.85 and I debit note payable for 45.13. So again, I check to make sure those equal 56.98, which they do. The last thing I wanna talk about are bonds payable. And bonds payable work a differently than installment notes. So a company will borrow, and again, they're borrowing from investors. They're borrowing from people, individuals and investors that want to loan money to a company. So usually there are fairly large amounts. So bonds can be issued at face value, or they can be issued at a discount or at a premium, depending upon how people judge the interest rate relative to investments of similar risk. So in this case here on January 1st, we issue $500,000 worth of bonds and we receive 490,000 in cash. So you'll need to determine is that a discount or a premium? These are five year 4% bonds. So we will record payment of interest at the end of each of five years. And at the end of the fifth year, we'll pay off the bond payable. So there's no principal payments that take place during the term of a bond payable. We just make interest payments either annually in this case, or semi-annually, and then we pay the full amount at the end. 
So go ahead and hit pause. You'll have to remember what type of an account is going to be used for the discount or the premium and how that's going to work in this case. So go ahead and hit pause, work on those three entries that I'm asking for here, and then I'll review them with you. Okay, so when we issue the bonds, we receive cash of 490,000. We owe $500,000, that's the agreement we made. So we're gonna credit bonds payable for 5,000. So we fill that gap with discounts on bonds payable. So discount on bonds payable is a contra account. It's a liability with a normal debit balance. So that starts at $10,000. Now remember, we're gonna amortize that over the term of this bonds payable. And in this case, I'm just doing this simple uh, straight line method. Okay, there are more complicated methods that you'll learn, but in this case, we're doing the simple one. So when I make that first payment of interest, I'm gonna send all my bondholders a total of $20,000. That's $500,000 times 4% for a full year. So I'm gonna pay them 20,000, but I also need to whittle down that discount on bonds payable. I need to amortize that in five equal trunk chunks. So I credit discount on bonds payable by 2,000. That gives me an interest expense of 22,000. So when I issue bonds at a discount, I'm receiving less money than I expect. So I'm recognizing the pain of that shortage uh, through higher interest expenses over the course of the bond payable. If it had been a premium, if I had received 510,000, then it would work to reduce my interest expense. I'd get that benefit over five years. When the bond becomes due and payable at the end of the fifth year, I debit bonds payable and credit cash for 500,000, which wipes out the liability. At that point, the discount on bonds payable will have been fully amortized and that amount would be zero as well. So hopefully this is helpful. Please uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you.